Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What is the weirdest thing you had to do at someone else's house because of their culture slash religion? So, I was invited to my friend's grandmother's home for Thanksgiving. I was new to the area and I had no family near so I graciously accepted. My buddy, Jason, gave me the breakdown of his extended family that was going to be in attendance. His parents were divorced but would both be attending. His grandparents were married but legally separated and lived apart, but grandfather would attending. His uncle Carl would be there with his mail order bride and their young son. His other uncle Ted, was openly gay and battling AIDS. He and his lover would also be there. So I have set the stage, you can probably picture all of them in your mind. In person, it exceeded my imagination. Ted's boyfriend wore cowboy chaps to dinner. They were all very colorful and animated, the pre-dinner discussions were riveting. As we were seated for the meal, Jason's grandmother, Sarah, took out an Altoids tin, took two and began passing it around the table. I watched as everyone took one to two and immediately took them and washed them down with a drink. Jason got the tin and did the same. I asked him, why is everyone swallowing Altoids before supper? They all laughed. He said oh, these are Valium. We learned several years ago that as we gather for Thanksgiving we drank and arguments ensued. So one year my uncle said, we should all just take a Valium at the beginning of the meal so we can all just chill the fuck out. They all laughed hysterically and agreed. I passed on the offer and handed the tin to Jason's mom as next in line. And as the evening played out, they all essentially zoned out during dinner, no fights transpired, and they considered it a successful Thanksgiving. I would have never imagined this would happen, but it was a damn fun experience. Went over to my Laotian friend's house when I was little and upon entering his house he said I had to remove my shoes and bow to his grandfather. When he said grandfather he pointed to a fish mounted on the wall. Thinking it was some kind of reincarnation thing I did it and was instantly berated and laughed at by his whole family. When I was 11 I stayed at my aunt's house over the school holidays with my 13 year old brother, she had a rule that we couldn't watch any TV shows that she considered impressionable. That meant no cartoons, namely Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon. We missed the end of the Cell Saga. My brother was pissed, he hasn't let it go to this day, over 20 years later. I worked for a rental car company in an Orthodox Jewish community. A customer rushed in on a Friday evening and asked to be driven home immediately because if we didn't make it to his house by sundown he would have to get out of the car and walk the rest of the way due to the Sabbath, he used an app on his phone to tell him the exact time of sundown each day. I didn't have a driver available to I just told him to go home and I'll come by his house later to grab the car. A half hour later I arrive at his house. Husband is nowhere to be found, and the following scenario ensues with his wife. My husband left the keys on our bedside table and I'm not allowed to touch them. Can you come in and grab them please? I awkwardly follow her into her bedroom and grab them from the bedside table. Can I ask one more favor? Do you mind unplugging the house for me? I then follow her into her basement and enter a room where there are literally 15 to 20 different electrical cords coming through holes in the, the walls and ceiling. And through a tangled series of different outlet strips are all consolidated into one master plug going into a standard wall outlet. She points at it and asks me to unplug it. I do. She thanks me. I leave. I had a lot of wild experiences in 5 years working that job. This one was definitely top 5. Went to a friend's house for dinner a lovely meal. The whole family cleaned their plates of food then turned them over and ate dessert on the back of their plates like it was the most normal thing in the world. I copied them just to be polite. Drank slightly chocolatey water for a month. I think this counts. Years back I was prospecting for a field site on a very remote island in the South Pacific. 
it was sufficiently remote that having me in the neighborhood was something of a spectacle, so as I made trips out to villages from my home village, I was fated along the way. I'd get to a village and the local headman and I would get to talking and they'd have a nice feast. These guys aren't entirely cut off from the world so one nice trade good they had was powdered milk and ovaltine. On arriving at the second village, I noticed that they weren't exactly well to do, but out came the ovaltine. Not wanting to use up their supplies. I foolishly interrupted the preparation to tell them that was enough. They looked confused but handed over water with just a bit of ovaltine floating at the top. It was wretched. But trying to be polite, I drank it all. And smiled. Word got around so every village I went to thereafter was informed of my preference. Couldn't exactly correct them at this point as somebody might have been insulted, so I drank it. Kinda wonder if the next visitor benefited from my blunders in protocol. We got yelled at for playing that devil game again. We were playing Mario Kart. And Bowser kept freaking his mom out. So we muted it and all was fine from then on. Meanwhile his little brother was literally playing Diablo 2 at the time in the same room. But he already had it muted so it wasn't a problem I guess. I once got roped into a wassailing. Marching by torchlight, literal flaming torches, down to the guy's orchard to sing at the trees was a new one on me. It wouldn't have been so bad but it was just a handful of us, as in just me, my school friend, his brother, and his parents. Still, we got some cider out of it. I had a good friend whose family were wealthy and very big on some weird sort of gift giving. Basically there were two things. You could not give them a present, no gifts at birthdays, Christmas, etc. If you gave them a gift they would either politely refuse or donate it. You always received a gift if you went to their house, even if it was for an afternoon. I remember going to my friend's house when I was 8 or 9, 1998-1999, and them giving me a PlayStation and each time I went over they'd give me a new game, which continued until they gave me a Nintendo GameCube. Very weird, and it wasn't because I was poor, we lived in the same area etc. This recently repeated itself when I visited my friend's house, now lives with his own family, and when I was leaving his wife was trying to give me a bottle of scotch and my daughter a fucking Nintendo Switch. I guess this qualifies as culture. My sister was dating a man that had been raised in a nudist colony. He took her to meet his family at their house at the colony. She was a tad surprised when his mother immediately says. There is a hook on the bathroom door for your clothes. My sister proceeds to spend the entire evening naked with his folks. Her BF had told her before they went that it would be her option but I guess his parents didn't think so. When I lived in Antwerp, Belgium, I once was stopped by an elderly, woman on the street. She was asking for help inside her house. Guiding me through a house where the temperature was way too hot, she stopped at every radiator and asked me to turn them down. In the end we went to the kitchen, where some Jewish women and children were watching me silently while I was putting all the burning gas stoves on a low heat. Then she showed me out, thanked me and closed the door. In Antwerp there is a big community of Hasidic Jews, I can imagine this was during Sabbath. I went over to a friend's house for a sleepover and when I changed into my pajamas her mom started demanding I put something else on and throw my pajamas out. I was really confused, she was yelling about how my pajamas were sinful and bore signs of the devil. I ended up just calling my mom to take me home because I was so uncomfortable, but that woman just kept scolding us for allowing me to wear satanic symbols. The symbols on my pajamas. Peace signs. She said they were broken crosses, so clearly a sign of the devil. I had a neighborhood friend that I played on the street with and at school sometimes. Her mom and dad always told me I wasn't allowed to be in the same room as my friend's older brothers because seeing young women was a sin for unmarried men. I was 10 at the most. The youngest of her older brothers was 16. 
when I was asked by my friend to sleep over for her birthday I was told by her and her mother that I needed to remain in my friend's bedroom. Her mother would bring us food and drinks and take us to go to the bathroom whenever it was safe. I told my sister about it the next day and she told me I wasn't allowed to go near their house or my friend again. To this day I still don't know if it was actually due to culture slash religion or if maybe they just had a really fucking weird family. I remember going to my Swedish friend's house. And while we were playing in his room, his mom yelled that dinner was ready. And check this. He told me to wait in his room while they ate. That shit was fucking wild. Must have ice cream after dinner, even a spoonful was enough. My friend invited me for a sleepover and his dad took out a small bucket of ice cream, turns out they have a separate freezer just for ice cream. Friend's mom didn't want any so she just took a spoonful from her husband. His dad would offer me ice cream whenever he can. We went for a drive and his dad saw a Dairy Queen we went there and spent an hour inside trying every kind of ice cream they had. His mom wasn't any different but it was with making sure the meal was balanced, doesn't matter if you ate a dozen fried chicken but you better eat a lot of vegetables with it. I thought that they probably grew up poor and ice cream was a luxury his dad never had and maybe his mom wasn't able to eat much. My paternal grandma was unwilling to let a guest go home without eating anything. Grew up with a lot of Mormons. Nothing weird except their fun little way to sneak caffeine. They'd accidentally buy Diet MT Dew because back in the 90s the label for the non-caffeinated and the regular version were so similar. I once went to have dinner with a girl from uni who came from a super nice but very religious family. Her dad turned out to be the pastor. Absolutely no problem being silent while they're praying before dinner, However after dinner the whole family got their Bibles out, and asked me politely, which my favorite verse was so we could read it together. Eh? Went to stay with distant relatives in Lithuania during winter. It's nothing for them to all get naked in the sauna and pat each other with birch branches then run out and roll in the snow. After a while I just went fuck it and gave into my inhibitions but at first it was a bit confronting being naked, exposed and vulnerable. On the flip side, their snow chilled vodka was primo which broke the ice so to speak, would 100% do again. I am reminded of the story on reddit where a girl went to her boyfriend's parents house to meet them, and they had a ritual where they gather around a table and savagely consume an entire orange, skin, and all. She didn't do it, and she upset the entire family. I think it's my favorite story from reddit late to the game, but here goes. I had a friend growing up whose parents didn't allow any snacks in the house. Every time he invited me over to spend the night. I was expected to bring boxes of snack food because it could be allowed if brought in by an outsider. And yes, his parents would partake, too. So there was junior high school aged Hegestash bringing boxes of snacks for an entire family to have a cheat night at my expense. I'm German and I had several weird interactions during my travels but I guess the weirded out ones were the hosts, not me. The way I was culturally socialized is to talk to people very blunt and direct. Say what you mean only kinda style. So when I was traveling especially in Asia there were several situations where people for example invited me to come in and have dinner or offered a cup of tea slash coffee or a snack. And when I felt like it I simply agreed and said yeah, sure sounds great. In more than one situation I could tell by the looks on their face that they 100% expected me to politely decline and did not really want to invite me for these things. So there were several situations where I sat in other people's houses, had food or a drink while they were visibly uncomfortable which then made me uncomfortable but of course it was too late to pull back. So, yeah would be easier when people just offered stuff they really meant to and not offer something you don't want out of politeness. In Germany if you don't want anyone in your home you simply not ask them. You say goodbye at the doorstep and close the door. Nobody would be pissed or feel alienated. And on the other hand when you invite someone in you really feel like it and want the other one to agree. 
nobody would say no out of politeness and then expect to be asked again. Work nights for a while. Rented a house in a suburban area with heavy Jewish population. One morning at 8 a.m. got a knock at the door. Got home from work at 4 a.m. So, I'm instantly annoyed, so annoyed that I answer the door in my boxers. Three little kids all look up at me. I sighed heavily and used the door to cover my nearly naked body. They squeaked up can you turn off our fire. At first I thought to tell them to just call the police and then said wait, do you mean your stove? Was answered in the affirmative. I quickly got dressed, went over and knocked on the door. The wife of the house opened the door and quickly pulled me in by my shirt. I looked around quickly and there was very little furniture in the house. Their kitchen table was a folding table with plastic chair and a bunch of men around it talking about the Islamic Brotherhood. The wife asked me to press one button on her electric stove, did it, then was very briskly pushed out of the house. I understand their religious practices. Still weird. Promptly went back to bed. My friend's father was a Geordie and his granddad was Scottish. Each Hogmanay it was my job to leave their house and re-enter bearing a gift of coal. This was my task as I was the only one there with dark hair. So that's a thing. When I was in primary school, I made a new friend from Hong Kong. One day she came over to my house for a play date, and when her parents came to pick her up in the evening, my parents invited them all to stay for dinner at ours. They were new immigrants to Australia and I guess my parents thought they might not have many friends or family here. Anyway, they politely declined and said they didn't want to impose. My parents insisted it was no imposition at all, but they again declined saying they didn't want to be rude. And intrude on our family. We were kind of taken aback, but just assumed maybe they had their own dinner waiting at home and were too polite to say so we saw them off. My friend later explained that her parents thought my parents weren't being genuine, and were only asking out of politeness and the fact that our parents didn't press the issue further was proof that we didn't really want them there. It's not weird, but I thought it was an interesting contrast even as a kid. In the West, when someone offers you hospitality, it's seen as a genuine and voluntary gesture, and it'd be rude to turn it down. Whereas in some cultures, the offer of hospitality is seen as a compulsory courtesy but not necessarily always genuinely meant, so it's impolite to accept it immediately. In the West it would be impolite to keep insisting after someone's already declined an offer. But in other cultures you're expected to press the issue a bit and keep insisting to give them a chance to accept if they want to without appearing rude. I grew up in a highly Mormon area, so most of my friends in school were Mormon, and I was occasionally invited into their more intimate holiday celebrations for example. One year, they gave me bags of food and drove me to a random house, then told me I had to go in and deliver the bags to the people inside, a big family. Who currently have no means of financial support, as a secret Santa. It was a wonderful gesture, but I felt really awkward being asked to do this in a stranger's house, but they asked me to do it for the expressed reason that I was a stranger, and they wouldn't know who had donated the food. In secondary school, my best friend's family were very devout Christians. For some reason, her mother would not let me use the toilet in their house. Their porcelain thrones were for Christian arses only. Hardly Christ-like if you ask me. When my friend moved away, we would write to each other, and her mother read all the letters. She told me I couldn't sign off my letters by saying things like lots of love, or love you loads, because it was lesbian. Uh, okay, Susan, take a day off. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.